Have you ever wondered if your browser could read your emails, schedule your meetings, and book restaurants while you focus on what actually matters? Well, Perplexity just released Comet, a new agent to KI browser, and I just got access to it, and I am blown away by all the things it can do. So let's dive in. All right, so let me show you three real-world scenarios that demonstrate why I loved Perplexity in my first shot. Okay, so let's get started. Here I am in the Comet interface. I downloaded Comet, and um, as soon as I am there, I'm able to see it's just like any other browser. I can search and go to um, any of the addresses on the left. I opened LinkedIn. I opened Assistant on the right. And I can start typing things in the Assistant. And what I'm doing here is I'm asking it to assess my one month of LinkedIn posts and their performance and engagement. And I want it to summarize what it finds and then suggest me topics and titles for what would be more interesting to my audience. And just like that, it is going in, analyzing my recent LinkedIn posts, um, and then it is doing a lot more analysis on all of the posts that I have done, the links that are in as part of that of those posts, and it's reviewing full content of my recent LinkedIn post to analyze, again, which topics generate the most engagement. And it is able to identify the top performing posts for me. Those are usually in the category of personal reflections, advice-driven posts, and the ones that, that are work-life balance related that do really well. Now, it is also giving me a table by engagement and impressions and formats, which is also really good, giving me a key takeaway, actionable insights from here. But I actually want to go further and test it out to see if it is going to help me create a post off of this recommendation. and actually go ahead and post on my behalf because that's what an agent to get browser should be able to do okay so with that i gave it that prompt and there we go it is starting to look at linkedin analyzing my linkedin profile crafting a personalized post for me on balancing health fitness and work it opened on the left hand side linkedin post interface on its own i'm not doing anything here generated the text for the post, pasted it into my LinkedIn post on the left, and now it's trying to click that post button by itself. And it did that. And I see on the left that a post was successful, and I can go ahead and click on that post. And look at that. I did not lift a finger. I asked Comet to do all of it, and it did an absolutely amazing job to take my idea and put it into, um, into a social post. Really good. Okay, now on to the next use case. The next thing I tried to do is to put it to use for my daily morning ritual, which is creating a to-do list. I create a to-do list to organize my day, and this happens every morning uh, or right before I go to bed. And um, that list is pretty manual. I sit down and I organize work-related list and personal list. And so I attempt it, and then I manually go in and write every single one of them, feed them into my calendar where I have the slot to do so. What I'm able to do with perplexity blew my mind. So, okay, watch this. So I pasted my today's to-do list. Um, I need to email somebody. I need to review a blog. I need to create a proposal, take our, my dog Simba to wet, and run in the evening. And I wanted to fit all of those things into today's calendar. Look at what it did. It looked at my calendar, identified where it, what are the things going on currently on my calendar, and then it looked for a wet appointment, although I didn't have any. I just was going to go in. And it also looked for um, the names of these people that I'm talking about that I need to review things for, which is also great. And eventually it created all these calendar appointments that are then visible on my calendar. And it took care of everything that I asked from the timing perspective, um, the details, like Simba's appointment was 4.30, so I put the, it put that in there, and then it put the run at the very end of the day, um, and it honored everything else that was already on the calendar. Pretty cool. This I do manually today can be offloaded to comment. This is amazing. The next use case I want to show is also very, very personal 
organization of my task. So I'm hosting some guests on my YouTube channel and I'm creating this list and manually sending out emails to my guests and the topics that we're going to discuss in this collaborative video. So all of this is in all over the place, different emails and I want and I also have calendar invites either to them, they need to set up an appointment and then it goes on to both of our calendars. It's a pretty manual process right now. So I thought I'll try to automate that and prepare for the day of the recording. So here's how I did that. Okay, so here's what I asked it to do. Look through my email and my calendar and see who's accepted the invite and have set up time with me to record the Cloudwell video. From that list and the details I sent to them in the long conversations over the email thread about what we are going to talk about, extract that information, and then draft a few questions based on this discussion that we've already had in multiple different mediums, emails and calendar and all that. Create a separate list of questions for each of the guests. So first I'm asking it to create that list. And it's going through my emails and my calendar and looking for who set things up. This is it reading uh, my related to my Cloud Girl videos. And it was actually unable to read and to find those emails. So here's what I did. Now again, like, you know, it's still pretty new. So I guess it's trying to do its best. Um, didn't quite work. So here's what I ended up doing. I went to my calendar. I gave it exact name for the email invite, the Cloud Girl video. And then I went back in. I basically provided it a little more information on, on the keywords of what to look for in my Gmail and in my calendar. Calendar, and that keyword was the Cloud Girl video on the calendar, right? So now it was able to retrieve who to have set it up. I have Adam and Kelsey coming up on my show and you can see the calendar invites. They are already booked. Um, so it is able to retrieve all that. And then it is able to go into the emails and figure out what our conversation was. And it is able to tell me based on their expertise, what should we be talking about? Some of the questions based off of the discussion as well as their expertise, it's outlined them. And so the next thing I'm asking it to do is the next thing I asked it to do, and I'm sure I could have just said this in, in one go, it add these questions to the respective invites. And it goes in, prepares the drafted questions for each of the guests and adds them into the invite for me and obviously needs my approval to schedule and, and add those details and update that invite. And once I click on that, there we go. It's updated. And it's also updating the second one. I can go in and check that the invite that I sent to Adam has all the questions that it just created for me in there. So easy to use. It's helping me becoming so productive just right off the gate. All right. What you just saw is an agent AI browser. How is it different? Well, traditional browsers like Chrome are essentially document viewers with some smart features bolted on. But agent AI browsers like Comet, they're fundamentally different. They don't just display web pages. They are actually understanding them, interacting with them, and can perform complex tasks on your behalf. Now, Comet is built on Chromium, but integrates uh, their AI engine natively. So instead of searching and clicking through dozens of requests, you can have a natural language conversation with your browser and watch it complete the entire workflow, which is exactly what we just ended up seeing. Now, under the hood, Comet runs on what they are calling agentic search. This means the AI can autonomously execute tasks like booking tickets, scheduling meetings, or researching complex topics across multiple tabs. It's powered by Perplexity's proprietary LLM and support supports both headed mode where you watch it work and headless mode where it works in the background for you. Now the browser integrates with Google Calendar, Gmail, which is what I showed you, and other productivity tools through secure OAuth connections. What's interesting from a technical perspective is that it maintains context across multiple tabs and can transfer information between different web applications seamlessly. Now, all your data is stored locally. It's not used for training their models and you have granular control over what the AI can access. Now, what we just saw in this demo also represents a fundamental shift in how we will interact with computers. Instead of us adapting to software interfaces, the software is adapting to how we naturally think and communicate. Now, this has massive implications for productivity, but also for how we design digital experiences. Now, from my experience building some of these AI systems over the years, it's how seamlessly they work together. The context retention, the cross-platform integration, the natural language processing, these are non-trivial technical challenges that I think Perplexity has solved very elegantly here. 
However, we are still dealing with the same fundamental challenge that plague all of the AI agents, occasionally hallucinating the need for significant permissions and the question of how much control we are comfortable handing over to an automated system. Looking ahead, this is just the beginning. We are moving towards a world where browsers become AI-operated systems, coordinating all of our digital activities, learning our preferences, and proactively managing our digital lives. OpenAI and Google are also working on their own AI browser and this could reshape the entire web. Now the question isn't whether this technology will succeed, it's whether we are ready for a world where our browsers know us better than we know ourselves. I think that's interesting. I personally am very excited about the future of agentic AI browsing, mostly from the productivity perspective. I would love to know what you think. Are you ready for the browsers that think or does that concern you? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'm linking the GitHub Spark AI coding video that I did recently. I think you're going to enjoy it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.